Thanks for joining the Abide YouTube channel. For more information about Abide, go to AbideChurchFL.com and enjoy today's message. Goodbye, church. Come on, who's excited to be in church this morning? Who's excited to be in the presence of the Lord this morning? Come on, stand to your feet. Let's start to get excited. I don't know about you, but I already feel the presence. And I'm asking the Lord to do a great work this morning. Come on, that you would show up and you would show out Jesus. I didn't come here to just be cute, even though I look a little good today. Come on, somebody. I came here to give the Lord a shout. Listen, I want to read Psalm 34 because we felt this morning that the Lord was saying he wants us to exalt him high. Can somebody say Amen. That we exalt the Lord high. So I want to read Psalm 34. It says this. I will bless the Lord at all times. Come on, say all times. All times. His praise shall continuously be in my mouth. My soul shall make his boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Come on, church. Can we just lift up our hands and begin to exalt the Lord? Oh, we lift you high this morning, Jesus. We came for no other reason but to lift you high. Lord, you are lifted high. You are seated high. Your train fills the temple. Your glory causes the angels to sing. It causes the angels to shout. So we lift up praise this morning. We lift you high this morning, Jesus. And we say, be exalted in this house. Be exalted in my life. Be exalted in my family. Be exalted in temple. Come on, you need to pray, church. Be exalted. In our region, Lord, we lift you high. We establish you above our hearts, Lord. And we say, have your way. In Jesus' name, if you believe it, say amen. We love you, Lord.
what if it not were for the Lord? But God. But God. Oh, so we just say thank you. Jesus, we enter our hearts right now. We enter in with full hearts saying thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for what you've done. You and you alone have woken my soul to see you rightly. So your body, your people, your children will say thank you. Come on, would you join me this morning just saying thank you, God. We just thank you, Jesus. You didn't have to come, but you always do. You always rescue me. Thank you, God. I got 
Vini to sing this this morning. That he is the only one who puts a smile in you and you alone. He is your only delight. And you're like, I don't feel it. Well, sing it until it sings the truth into your heart. Sing your way into the truth this morning. Butterflies when you walk into the room, Jesus. You and you alone. Waking up my soul. And it's my joy more than any person, more than anything. Oh, you and you alone. Are waking up my soul. And it's my joy to think. Oh, we're going to sing this bridge one more time. We're going to sing it right to the Father. We're going to say, Lord, you're the only one when you walk in the room that my heart lights up and my heart comes alive. And even if I don't feel it right now, I'm going to sing my way into that truth. You and you alone are waking up my soul and it's my joy.
just for show or attention Oh, it's sincere, Jesus I really do love you I really love you 
just lean in for a moment. He is holy. Holy are you, Lord. Holy Jesus. Oh, in all of your ways, you are holy. Holy. In all of your ways, you are holy. to kind of end this time with just asking the Lord to fill us once again with awe and wonder. We've been in awe and wonder of many things, of man, of ministries, of all kinds of things, but I'm asking the Lord to baptize us with fresh awe and wonder of His name. So can we just lift up our hands? It's not a hype moment. Let's just sincerely ask Him, Father, would you fill us with awe and wonder? At the mention of His name, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that He is Lord. So let's just lift up our hands. Let's just ask him. Come on. Filled with wonder. Come on. Let's just come into agreement. Oh, wonder. Just at the mention of Jesus.
we just pray? Let's just pray for one another right here. Grab the hand of the person next to you if you feel comfortable. Let's pray for a fresh revelation. Father, we need a fresh revelation of who you are. We need to understand what it means to cry out holy and have that hit our hearts, God. I want you to pray. I want you to pray, God, we cannot be satisfied with singing songs that are not hitting our hearts, God. We want to understand what it means to meet face to face with the Holy One of Israel. We want to be touched. We want to be gripped. Oh God, cut us again with your name, God. Touch us, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, touch us. Oh, you're beautiful. You're mighty. You're holy. You're righteous. judge you are set apart father reveal the light of your face upon our hearts today Jesus we want to know you intimately we need you Lord make us a desperate people that at the mention of your name there would be fear and reverence Son of David, have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Oh, Son of David, have mercy. Oh, God, upon our region, have mercy. Son of David, have mercy. Son of David, we need you, Lord. Have mercy. Don't pass us by, Lord. Son of David. Oh, Jesus. Son of David, have mercy. Father, make us a hungry people. We don't want to be moved by songs and rhythms. We want to intimately be pursuers of your heart, God. Help us to love you. Help us to love you. Shed your love abroad our hearts, God. Help us to love you. Make us like that woman with the issue of blood. We will pursue you. We press through the crowd, through the noise. Son of David, have mercy. This is not a spectator sport, the Lord wants to impart a fresh hunger in his people. We long to we'll see, see you. We say, rise. come, Lord. Come, Lord Jesus, come. We want to see, see you. And come, see Lord you Jesus, rightly. come. Come, we Lord Jesus, see. come. We desire you. And see you rise. disappointment right now I just feel like the Lord wants to deal with this man some of you are carrying this great disappointment and father by the Holy Spirit we just say bye-bye disappointment we say bye-bye disappointment bye-bye heaviness father we ask you for fresh joy even for those that don't have faith for that right now. We say joy. We say joy. We say joy. Praise for heaviness. Joy for mourning. 
For those that can't receive it in the room, I pray someone would just stand in the gap and say, joy, joy. Just release that, babe. Joy, joy, joy. Let's just linger here for a moment. It may not be for you. That's okay. We speak joy over you. That the joy of the Lord would be your strength. He is strong tower, mighty fortress. He is the refuge. give you those parts that are painful right now in Jesus name we ask that you till the soil of our hearts right now we thank you for this moment father we have faith that you care about our hearts about our hearts so Holy Spirit we receive all that you have for us we linger Lord blessed are those who ascend and linger anyone who's dealing with sickness right now I want I want some of my elders to grab some oil real quick I really mean this because it's like we can't just sing about the goodness of the Lord I believe he wants to demonstrate it so if you're dealing with any sickness would you just lift up a hand right now I want to we want to pray right now I want somebody to grab some oil my elders and staff I want specifically to pray for Amy right now Amy stand we're gonna pray for you If you're dealing with any sickness right now, we're going to pray and we're going to agree. Just before, before we, we pray.
prayer, I feel like there's some specifics. I feel like there are people here with, with an ankle problem. Um, if you've got a wrist problem, um, back, middle back and right shoulder and arthritis, those are a couple of words that I actually had uh, for today. So if that is you, raise your hand and the, the staff and elders will come around. Keep the hand up until somebody's with you. We're going to pray and we're going to agree right there in the back, Kathy. If, listen, you don't, if some of my ministry school students find somebody right now, come on. There's still hands up. I'm going to wait here. Hey, just, just go ahead, bro. Just go ahead. I need everybody to get prayed for because I believe this is an important moment. The Bible tells us to grab oil and anoint with the elders and believe for, for healing. And everybody, I'm not going to pray until everybody's being prayed for. Hey, bro, will you help me real quick? Everybody, anybody missing? Father, right now, in Jesus' name. Church, let's pray. Father, right now, in Jesus' name. God, you said to taste and see that you are good. So, Father, right now, in Jesus' name, we pray for divine healing over everybody. We command all sickness to go right now, in Jesus' name. By the blood of the Lamb, God, we command sickness to go, and we speak wholeness over your body. In Jesus' name, we tell all blood disease, all sickness, all diabetes, and we tell unbelief to leave the room right now in Jesus' name. We say go, we say go, and that faith would come. That faith would come and touch our hearts, God. We release, God, the Spirit of God to touch every heart right now and give us the faith to receive. We rebuke sickness, and we say take your hands off of your people. Take your hands off of God's people right now in Jesus' name. We break generational curses right now in Jesus' name. We break shame and guilt and condemnation off of every person right now in Jesus' name. We break the spirit of perversion in Jesus' name. Come on, let's pray through a little longer. We tell everybody to come into alignment right now. And we, we silence every voice of the accuser that would say it's not going to happen. We silence every voice. Your word says your sheep hear your voice. Father, we release faith. We release faith. We release faith. We say be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Holy, holy, wash them with your blood, God. Wash them with your blood, God. Father, your word says, by your stripes we are healed. So we receive healing, physical, emotional, spiritual healing. We receive it. We receive it. We rebuke any blockages right now in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father, that you said you've given us all authority. Father, we pray that you would uproot every lie right now. Every lie right now. Every lie right now. This is not your inheritance. Yeah. Hey, let's 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 pray for Mary just real quick as we end here. Just grab the hand of your spouse. Father, we thank you that your word says what you bring together, no, nothing can separate. So, Father, we bless every marriage right now. Father, if there's any offense, we pray grace right now in Jesus' name. We pray grace right now in Jesus' name, God, that you would touch every heart, God, that you would renew love for one another, God. We pray for grace in the relationship, God, that you would restore and you would renew. Father, give grace for forgiveness. Father, even for those that are not in the room right now, 
for those that are standing in the gap and believing for their loved ones. Father, we thank you that you would stretch out your hand and touch them right now with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Would you touch them? Oh, Jesus, would you, Father, would you be in the middle of our marriage? Convict any area in our lives, God, that is living in compromise. Touch our homes, God. Make it a dwelling place for you. Make it a dwelling place. There's nothing you can't heal. Father, help the men of this room to lead their homes, to be the men of God you've called them to be. That doesn't mean to Lord, that means to serve, to grab the towel and love their wives as you have loved the church. Help us to lay down our lives for our wives. Would you break off selfishness? Ooh, there's a lot of resistance there. Break off selfishness. Help us men to see the treasure you have given us. To honor her and love her and cover her. Father, we thank you that a home is only as strong as its union. So Father, bless the unions in this room. Every covenant. Restore covenants in the room, God. In Jesus' name, everyone said amen. Can we just give the Lord a hand? Come on. Wow. Hey, why don't you take a minute? Why don't you greet somebody? Give somebody a hug you've never met. Say, it's good to see you. We love you. Bless you. Come on, meet somebody. Meet somebody. Say, good. happy Sunday. Good morning. Happy Sunday. How you feeling? Oh, you lo you're missing that hour, huh? Y'all are the real ones. It's cold. You lost an hour and you're still here. Oh, I love you guys so much. Man, it's such an honor to worship Jesus with you guys. Um, just, I just want to say, I just feel thankful. How many of you just feel thankful? Three of you. Good. I, I, I'm, I'm thankful. I just feel thankful for what the Lord is doing, that he would come and that he would touch us in that way. Amen. And man, if this is your first time, we want to welcome you. My wife and I right here, we're the senior leaders here at Abide. Thank you for joining us. It's an honor to have you. If you're new, we would love to connect with you. We just want to know how we can serve you. One of our values here at Abide is family. And so family, how many of you know family looks different for every family? The way I do family doesn't mean you have to do it the same way, but we all have to do family. Say amen. amen. God is into family. So we want to welcome you. We want to know how we can serve you, be here for you. And we have a few announcements. The first one's very important. I want you to hear me. Um, this week, we are giving our Levites the week off from prayer room. So, like, we, we feel very adamant that it's important for us to give our team rest. Amen? And so, for those of you that don't know, we have a prayer room that happens here on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays. And it takes a lot of work to create those moments, those spaces and places for God to touch us. And so, we wanted to give the team a break this week. Amen? So if you show up here on Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, you can pray. It's just not going to happen inside. You have to pray on the property, and that's okay. We love that. But we really felt to give the team the week off and to bless them. So it's spring break. We're going to encourage them to spend time with their families, to love on their families. And we'll be back next week. So if you come this week, there's going to be nobody here for prayer room. It will resume on Saturday night, correct? 
So it will be happening Saturday night, 6 to 8. I believe Tommy will be here on Saturday. So if you want to come on Saturday, let's go and prepare for Sunday. But as far as the week goes, there will be no prayer room and there will be no youth on Friday. So we're going to give everybody the week off and then we'll resume and get back to it. Amen? Amen. Amen. So and, and the last announcement I have is they're doing a prayer, prayer team meeting today directly after service. There should be food for you guys. So if you're a part of the prayer room or the prayer team, they're going to be meeting on the back patio, which is behind the kids' building um, directly after service. So if that's you, if you're interested in being a part of the prayer room or you're a part of that, or the prayer team, please stay. We want to just give context to where we feel God is taking us because it's important. you got to know where God is leading us. How many of you know God is leading us? He led the people of Israel by a pillar of cloud and a fire, and we believe in the very same way God is leading us. We are a spirit-led church, which means if he doesn't move, we ain't moving. Say amen. amen. Moses said this, if you don't go, we don't want to go. So, so I, I feel this, man. I feel like we're in a season where God is moving us. He's expanding us in not just, a lot of times when we hear expansion, we think about buildings and people. But I'm interested in the spiritual expansion. Like I'm interested in finding a place where God tabernacles, where he dwells, and we're figuring out how to steward it so he doesn't leave. Some people in the room, you don't believe that God will just dip up and leave. He will. He will. There is such, I mean, it's not my turn to preach to you. But I just want to say, like, I believe God is spiritually expanding us. Which means as we grow bigger on the outside, there are things we can't partake of on the outside. As we grow bigger on the inside, there are things we cannot partake of on the outside. Praise God. <laughs> I feel that. So let's, I want to worship with our giving because I'm super excited. You guys are going to be blessed. You're going to hear from Steve Haynes today from South Africa. It's, it's just, I've actually been waiting for this, I feel like, for a year now. It feels like forever. But for those of you that don't know, they are, they've just joined the shepherding team. They're the newest part of the shepherding team. And I'll give a little intro. But I just, I want to encourage us to continue. And I just want to thank you. Like, I just want you to know if you're new here or you don't give, this is a generous church. Like, I, I want to thank you for your generosity because we believe, like we said, that God, he's expanding us and he's giving us vision. We've talked to you guys about basketball courts and playgrounds, but all of it is unto God touching this region. Say amen. amen. Like, we believe that God wants to touch this region. And there are those of you that God wants to use to be a part of that. But for those of you that, that you simply just step into that dream with giving, I just want to thank you. Can you receive that? Thank you for trusting this house. We really pray that God would stretch and multiply every dollar, but it takes dollars to do ministry. So I just want to thank you for that because we believe that we're just getting started. Like what God wants to do here, we believe we're still in the first fruit season. And I was reading this scripture this week, and I want to find it here because I believe that, that it's really important. It's in Proverbs 3, and he says this. Boom, 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 let me find it. Do, 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 do. Give, give me a second, give me a second, give me a second. Yeah, here it is. Honor the Lord. This is Proverbs 3, 9. It says, honor the Lord with your wealth and with the best part of everything you produce. Then, say then. Then he will fill your barns with grain and your vats will overflow with good wine. Meaning, listen, as we bring to the Lord, he is going to bless us. We don't believe in a prosperity gospel, but it's equally as ignorant to, to, to ignore the fact that when we partner with him, he partners with us. So I believe, man, like how many of you know, like gas is like at $15 a gallon. Like it's a really great time to invest in something that's not worldly right now. Like to store up treasures in his kingdom so that when things happen, we're not shaken. Like we know we've sown in something that cannot be taken away from us. Amen. So I just want to encourage us to continue in that. We're in the world, but we're not of it. Which means my economy is not according. It's according to heaven's economy. We're blessed, we're covered, so we don't believe in the whole fear thing, but we believe that we have to be in proper alignment with heaven in every part of our lives. So I want to pray, Father, we ask that you would bless us, God, as a ministry, not just with money, but with wisdom on how to reach this community. We, we have faith, God, that you have given us this community. Like you have, you have chosen us to minister to this neighborhood around us, God. So we ask you for wisdom. Even right now, Holy Spirit, would you touch them? The mothers, the fathers, the children. Would you touch them, God? And as we give, Father, we want to know that we're giving with faith that you are going to touch them. And as we do our part, you will do yours. In Jesus' name, everyone said amen. 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 These are the ways you can give. They're going to pass buckets. And there's a black box in the back. So bless you as you give. As I said, you guys are going to get to hear from, from Steve Haynes. He has an amazing South African accent. So you're going to be blessed just by that. 
But, but I want to say something because I really honor, I just want to say, bro, I honor you, man. Like, I, you know, we, we went out to the mission field for three months, and it was a step of faith. But I don't know how much they're going to share, but they have moved their whole family from South Africa to here to serve at Abide, and they had never stepped foot at Abide. We had never met face to face. We talked over Zoom. God gave him a word, and he sold everything, and they moved their whole family to be here. So that should speak, that should speak a couple of things to us. That should speak to us that, that they are a family of great faith, and we should honor them, but also that God is doing something special here. That God would uproot a family that has been doing ministry for 20 plus years to come serve this house. We should be honored by that. So as he comes up, can we just honor them and receive from them this morning? Let's just honor Steve as he comes. Whew, awesome. Good morning, everyone. It is so good to be here with you all. Well, so you say, y'all, and uh, you'll have to get used to my accent if I speak a little bit fast or if I use lingo that you're not used to, just wave at me. So we, we say petrol, fuel, you guys talk about gas, those sort of things. So if I, if I confuse you, it's not my intention, but uh, it's been an amazing privilege to really have arrived here. It's about six weeks ago that uh, we made the move from South Africa here, and uh, you guys have been amazing in how you've welcomed us, how you've supported us. Uh, I want to just say thank you from us as a family. Uh, we really do love you. And uh, also to say that I know that what, what you guys carry here, I was chatting with uh, Gio this week, is, is not just that we bringing something, but I know that what you guys carry, we need. Um, and it was one of the reasons why God brought us here was there's something that he has for us as a ministry, as a family, for the next season for us that we needed to be in this environment. And God's been doing so much, and it's just amazing. Um, so before I get going, I want to just share a little bit about uh, who we are. But if we can get the first slide on, uh, we are from Cape Town. So it was actually rated the most beautiful city in the world last year. And uh, so, so that is our beautiful city that we are from. Uh, I actually grew up on the east coast of South Africa. Jackie is from Cape Town originally, but we met in Cape Town, and we've been doing ministry most of our life, uh, ministry life in Cape Town. Uh, but I hit up a ministry actually called Daniel Group. If we can go to the next slide. And, uh, and Daniel Group, our passion is really like Daniel. Daniel was someone who, for me, carried three attributes that I believe every believer should walk in. Number one, he was phenomenally supernatural. Amen? I mean, you read about his life. There are prophecies we're still waiting for in the lion's den, handwriting on a wall. I mean, he was phenomenally supernatural. That's number one. But number two, he was also a man of immense character. Amen? I mean, he served three kings, and the only thing they could find wrong with him was that he prayed. How many of you know we need politicians like that? Yeah. Guys, it doesn't matter where you are in the world. Politicians, we need to pray. Amen? doesn't matter where you are. But he was someone in government who they couldn't find anything wrong with him. Character. Supernatural character. And then the third thing was I believe that God has called us to go beyond just having a view where, where we believe that God moves in a ministry context, and we don't see him moving out in the business world, in education, and all of these areas. Daniel was not a pastor. He didn't wake up every morning as a prophet either. He actually woke up and he went to work as a government official giving wisdom to the king of that time. So we need some people who can get up in the morning, put a suit on, I don't know why I'm preaching this part, but, but who can go to work and not have a problem with hearing God's voice in that context either. We, we had a, a guy in our church who was literally, he was on government, and there were two political parties literally like almost fighting each other over the table, and he's sitting there like, God, what must I do? And in that moment, God gives him a word of knowledge, and he says, listen, this is what I think we should do, and the whole place went quiet. And both parties stopped and said, 
we'll go with that. Why can't we believe God for more? Amen. So that's why we called it Daniel Group. Daniel, um, from our from him. But, uh, but really, our passion is equipping. And so I'm going to show you a couple of photos of our different ministry schools. Uh, so we'll go through these quite quickly. So go to the first one. Um, so this is where we run one of our Bible schools in South Africa. This is Kailicha in Cape Town. Uh, I want to give a shout out to any of our Kailicha friends and pastors, all the Cape Tonians who are online. Um, but this is where we run one of our Bible schools. We can go to the next one. Um, so this is what it looks like inside. No air con. When, when it rains, it's loud, but it's wonderful. You know that the Bible talks about that um, in James, it talks about his heart for the poor, and it says that God has given a special grace of faith to the poor. And so often we feel sorry for people who are poor, whereas actually they've got so much to give us by what they're walking in. Um, and so I've been blessed with that. We started that last year. That was in COVID. We started this Bible school like out of the blue in COVID. Next one. Uh, so these will be a couple of pictures from it. You can just carry on scrolling. Um, so this is what it looks like. Carry on. So that was the one ministry team that we had come in. We take them onto the streets. I believe that we should be on the streets. We, we shouldn't, Jesus did most of his ministry out on the streets, and so whenever we run a Bible school or ministry school, as we are here as well, we're going to be getting out on the streets, amen? So this was one of our outreaches, there we had one of the malls praying for people, we had a lady on crutches who dropped her crutches, started walking, you don't have to have it at a crusade, you can just be at a mall. Um, next one, uh, this lady just blesses our heart, she's just so hungry for Jesus. Next one. And that was our graduation last year. Um, and then we also ran a supernatural lifestyle school. That's a nine-day school. And uh, we can just go through those quickly. Uh, that was the one school that we ran. This was a couple of years ago. Next. Okay, carry on. Prophetic ministry. There's some worship time. And then, and then again, onto the streets. Put into practice what we are learning. Amen. Um, and then the last, I think the next one, yeah, we baptize people. Next one. This one, in fact, he might be online. I know he said he was, he was is he online? Um, so Ishmael on the left, this was a phenomenal testimony that happened. One of the highlights in the last couple of years. I actually called out a word of knowledge, and someone took a photo as I was calling it out, where I had my hand in my ear, and I said, there's someone here who's got an ear problem. And, uh, and we were praying for a number of people. And Ishmael was, was seated at the front, and uh, as we're praying, he feels like there's something blocking his ability to hear. So he's like, God, that's strange. And what it actually was, was it was his, um, what do you, his hearing aid. And when he took his hearing aid, he realized he could hear perfectly, and actually his hearing aid was limiting his hearing, and he was totally healed. So... I just love it. I love it when Jesus just shows up. So this morning I want to I want to speak a little bit about um, the life of Jesus and how how are we to walk in what it is that Jesus has for us? Because so many of us we want everything of Jesus, right? And we want to we want to be able to embrace. Every aspect of him, his ministry, his character, his life, his relationship with the Father, everything about Jesus we want. That's who we're modeling our life on. And I want to look at two scriptures, and I want us to read together, and then I'm basically going to just speak off them. And so open with me in your Bibles to Luke 7. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to speak about two occurrences where Jesus raised people from the dead. So he raised three people in total from the dead, and we're going to touch on two of those this morning um, and really learn some of the principles. So Luke 7 verse 11, and I'm reading here from the New Living Translation, it says, Soon afterwards, Jesus went with his disciples to the village of Nain, 
and a large crowd followed him. A funeral procession was coming out as he approached the village gate. The young man who had died was a widow's only son, and a large crowd from the village was with her. When the Lord saw her, his heart overflowed with compassion. Don't cry, he said. Then he walked over to the coffin and touched it, and the bearer stopped. Young man, he said, I tell you, get up. Then the dead boy sat up and begged, began to talk, and Jesus gave him back to his mother. Great fear swept the crowd, and they praised God, saying, a mighty prophet has risen among us, and God has visited his people today. Now, I want you to turn over to John 11. John 11. And we're going to be looking now at, at Lazarus and the story of Lazarus. Now, it's actually quite a long one, so I'm not going to go into the whole thing. But there's part of it that I want to touch on uh, with Jesus here, and it's verse 32 onwards. So it says here, when Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? He asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? It's amazing how you'll always be criticized. Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord said, Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad odor, for he has been there four days. Then Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let them go. Two amazing stories. Now, I am trusting that we're going to live in a day and age where we're going to see more and more people getting raised from the dead. We need to start believing this stuff. Come on. This is not just for Jesus. This is not just for Jesus. We are called heal the sick, raise the dead. It's actually a command as any other command. All right? So for us to say, ah, this is just Jesus. No, 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 no. There's some principles we've got to get here to understand that he's called all of us to walk in a function or on a level that he walked in. Paul got this, and he raised a person from the dead. There are, there are people raising other people from the dead around the world right now. We've got to learn how to step into that. We've got to have more faith for it. And firstly, we've got to get to the place where we start believing it. So one of the things we do is we, we take people to the morgue at a hospital. Why? If you're going to meet dead people, it's a good place to start. God, I'm not joking. We literally take, and you know, one, one guy who oversaw the morgue in the one hospital we went to, he's like, you're the first Christians who have ever come and asked that that actually believe that what the Bible says can happen. Wow. We need more Christians who will believe the Bible. Amen? So we step out. I had, I had an incident. I, I got to share this story when I, when I talk about raising the dead. So, so I came back from a mission trip to Pemba uh, where Heidi Baker, I mean, they've seen people getting raised from the dead, and we like these pastors laying hands on us. So I came back and I shared with the church, that we had these pastors lay hands. We feel we've been anointed for it. This is what we're going after. And, uh, and this was great. Until about a week later, I got a phone call from someone in my church. And I said, Pastor, someone at my church has just died. We need you to come and raise him from the dead. <laughs> uh, how would you like to be the nuts? <laughs> it's like, uh, I feel I'm a bit busy now. You know, it's like, 
So I said, okay, uh, we'll come. So I phoned up some of my, my university students that I was discipling, and I said, hey, listen, we're going on an outreach today. So they're like, yeah, we said, where are we going? I said, don't worry about that. I'm coming and picking you up in 15 minutes. So I picked them up and we drive to the hospital. It's like, oh, cool, the hospital outreach. Yeah, oh, you're getting there. It's sort of like that. And we walk in and there's a body lying in front of us. And I'm like, oh, Jesus, what do I do? So we lay hands. We start praying. We're laying hands and we're praying. We're laying hands and we pray. And about half an hour goes past. Now, one of the things that I realized uh, when, when we were in Pemba, so praise the Satoli, who, who he's raised himself personally, three people from the dead. He said, on average, it takes four hours of praying before they've seen us. And I'm like, well, no wonder most of the Western church have never seen something like this happen. <laughs> we give up after five minutes. Oh, it's obviously not the Lord's will, you know, we move on. So I'm like, well, we're going to pray. We're going to push in. So we start praying. We start praying. We start praying. And after about half an hour, I said to our team, I said, what are you feeling like the Lord's saying? And they're like, nothing yet. We're just going to keep pushing in. So we keep praying and we keep praying. And after about an hour and a half, I feel like I actually feel peace in my spirit. And, and I get this vision of this man standing in front of me. And I'm like, and he's in heaven. And I'm like, this is it, because I've heard these stories. You know you hear those stories. I've heard these stories where it's like you see him and you call him, and then he responds, and I'm like, here he is. And so I, I call him, and as I do that, I see like Jesus step in front of him. And I felt God say to me, I've got him. And I'm like, well, that's weird. What do I do now? So I, I stopped and I said, guys, what, what are the rest of you feeling? Because, you know, I wanted to hear from everyone else. And I shared the vision, and one of the ladies who was praying, she was a university student, she said to me, she said, Stephen, I was at that workplace two days ago, and I led that guy to Jesus. <laughs> and and we've, we all felt peace about it, that actually he's in the right place, and we must let it go. Now, that doesn't mean I'm going to stop, because I still want to pray for more people, because I believe that there is more for us to step into. Amen. And why was it? Oh, that's why I'm sharing it, because we're talking about Jesus raising the dead. Okay, so we all want to walk in the supernatural, and we want to go after things like, you know, supernatural conferences, supernatural schools, the five keys to the supernatural. Now, I'm having a little bit of a dig here, because I run a supernatural school, and I lecture a course called the five keys to the supernatural. So don't hear what I'm not saying, okay? I believe in all of those things, but so often what we do is we run after those aspects, and we miss the greater thing of what Jesus was functioning in here. And you know what it was? Compassion. It was compassion. It was Luke 7 verse 13 when it says, when the Lord saw her, his heart overflowed with compassion. It was John eleven thirty three 33 where it says, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. John 11 verse 35, the shortest scripture in the Bible Jesus wept. It's John eleven thirty eight. 38. Jesus once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. And I think one of the things we overlook is that Jesus was someone who felt people. He was someone who had empathy. He was someone who, we, we heard about the humility of Jesus and of God, but he was someone who carried the place where when he walked along, he felt the needs of the people. He felt their brokenness. He felt where they are. He knew when they were carrying evil thoughts towards him. But more than that, because we get stuck on that, he was broken for the people. He says they like sheep without a shepherd. That's not a theological statement. That was him feeling the fact that they, are, they don't have the shepherd looking after them. He was moved. Matthew 9, 36, Mark 1, verse 41, Matthew 14, 14, Mark 6, 34. All of these are, are scripture references to miracles that Jesus did where it starts off by saying that he was moved with compassion. In other words, he saw a situation. He knew he had the answer, 
But what got him to respond to that was his heart that moved first. You see, your heart has to move before action follows. And the problem with the church is not that we don't know the keys to the supernatural or we don't have the answers to the world. The problem, I believe, with the church today is we actually don't have the compassion for the world. When did we last weep? When did we last cry out saying, God, would you move? Because you see, we become so callous. Guys, we become, and I'm including myself here, we become callous. This week, watch, uh, not watching the news, reading, reading some of the news in it. You know, you see the photos of Ukraine and you see people who are absolutely broken and hurting. And because you've read it now for a week or so, whatever it's been, you just page through it. And we don't realize that what's happening is that our heart condition is becoming callous, that we see a photo and we don't realize that this is actually a human being who is crying out fearful for their life. And so slowly but surely our hearts change. We watch movies whereby it's okay to just see people getting killed. And we don't realize that what's happening inside of us is that our heart is slowly adjusting. It's slowly adjusting to the place whereby it might not be that if you were to see someone get killed outside, you don't feel it. But it might be that you slowly get cold. And you don't feel people anymore. My wife and I, we were driving down the street here, um, this was about two weeks ago, and as we were driving, there was a young lady, she must have probably been in her early 20s, lying on the pavement, passed out. I don't know what it was, alcohol, drugs, but she was lying there, middle of the day, and I drove. And about two days later, I'm sitting there, I'm like, God, should I have stopped? And this is the thing that happens, is that we become callous, because we've seen it. We've seen it. We've, we, we've done that. We've, you know, we, we just drive on, because, well, that's, that's her problem. That's not my problem. And what God said to me this week, he said, Stephen, I'm crying out and I'm weeping for people on the earth, but my people do not weep for the people. And my my heart's cry is that God would absolutely undo our hearts, that we would see people the way he sees them, that we would be broken for people the way he breaks for people. What makes you weep? I remember there was there was a lady who came to our service the one time who she came forward for prayer and she had had a stroke. She was about twenty one years old and she was partially paralyzed down the right hand side. Her couldn't really lift her hand. She would drag her foot as she walked. She would stir her speech and and her right eye wouldn't focus. And you could see it on her face. It was just sort of hanging a little bit and. Um, our, our senior pastor called me over and said, will you come and pray with me? Let's, let's pray for her. And we prayed for, for this young lady. And as she's in front of us and we're praying, literally a five-minute prayer, we watched her countenance change and tears just started coming down her face. And we said to her, said, what's happening? Like, are you feeling his presence? What's going on? And she just starts going like this. And we're like, what's going on? And she said, no, you don't understand. We're like, yeah, you're right, we don't. What's going on? And she said, I can, I can move, I can feel. She got totally healed right there in front of us that day. Now, here's the thing. Is that I look at that, and part of me says, here was a 21-year-old who would have spent the next 60-odd years with this condition. 
And I share that because a miracle is not just about an amazing testimony. But it's a recognition that in that moment, God's heart was broken and he moved. He doesn't, he doesn't heal people for the testimony. Do you know that? You know, have you ever heard someone say this, God, I pray you'd heal them because this will be a great testimony. Have you ever heard that? That's bad theology. That's not why he does it. He does it because he loves that person and he's paid a price for their healing. That settles it. Now, will it be a great testimony? By all means. That's why we pray for it as well. But our hearts need to be moved, not that this would somehow give us glory, give our church glory, the testimony to give great. May our hearts be moved that when a person is sick, we feel broken for them. You see, the gifts of the Spirit are supposed to be things that, that are because we are moved. The Bible school will know this because I shared this. I, I, get, I get frustrated when I hear people make statements to me about, yeah, but I seek God's face, I don't seek His hands. Have you heard that? Okay, I seek God's face because I love Him. I seek God's hands because I love people. When I see a person who's broken, when I see a person who's struggling with cancer, when I see a person who's on the road to hell, if you're not seeking His hands, you have shown no love towards that person. I seek both. I seek all of Him. I want everything of him, so I'm not going to ignore it. When last have we wept for the lost? I mean, truly broken for lost people. How many of you remember the evangelist Steve Hill? There would seldom be an altar call that that man would make without weeping. And then you wonder why so many people came into the kingdom through him because he was broken for the lost. He wept for them. He prayed for them. And when he preached, that was just the tip of the iceberg. Everything that followed afterwards was because of what he did in the quiet place of having a heart for lost people. We had at one of our schools, this was so cool, we had our teams go onto the streets and they, they're walking past a police station, and a mother and her teenage boy walk out. And so they walk up to these two people, and they introduce themselves, and they just start sharing what they feel God's saying, giving prophetic words. And then at the end of it, you know, they're quite encouraged. They say, listen, we're having a conference tonight if you want to come along to it. And this mother and her son came to the conference. And uh, we, at the conference, at the end of it, gave a salvation altar call, and the boy came and gave his life to Jesus. He then shared his testimony. He was arrested that day for stealing a car. And the police phoned the mom and said, please come pick your son up. And he was now waiting on his trial date. And as he walks out, he meets these crazy Christians who give him a prophetic word. And he gives his life to Jesus. The following night he comes, he gets baptized in the Holy Spirit. It's like a total transformation. But would it start with us being burdened? Because how many people are out there, but because we're just not willing to step out of the church doors and do anything about it, they're going to hell. We don't like to think about it. Luke 10, verse 25. The last passage I want to speak on. On one occasion, an expert of the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, he replied, how do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and with all your strength, with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied, do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself. <laughs> so he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor. In reply, Jesus said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho 
when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road. And when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, poured on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey and brought him to an inn and took care of him. The next day, he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. We know this. You probably learned it at Sunday school way back. But here's a story. And Jesus speaks about the fact that there were two men who walked past. A little bit like me driving past. Okay, so before we all like to put ourselves in, I'm the good Samaritan camp. Sometimes we're actually the Levites or the Pharisee who drives past. And they all had different reasons. In fact, if you go and read it, the Levite was not allowed to touch dead people. You go and read in the Old Testament. So he looks at it and he says, you know what? I'm not sure if that person's dead or not, but I need to obey the law, and he walks the other side. Whereas Jesus says, what's the greatest law? Love the Lord your God, and the second side, love your neighbor. So that trumps over, and what he's actually getting at is that in the starting point, you should have started by just seeing, is this guy okay? Is this guy okay? And sometimes we put our agendas above God just saying, would you just stop for a moment? Would you stop? And see, this is our problem is that we're too busy, actually, that when God highlights a person and says, would you just stop, Stephen, and speak to that person? It's like, no, no, not today, Jesus. Another day, I've got enough on my plate. And we move on because we've got somewhere to go. And this isn't my problem, Jesus. This is someone else. And God's saying, well, would you have my heart? Until finally a Samaritan comes. Now, let's take a step back. Jesus is insulting the Pharisee or the teacher of the law who's asking him the question. Because the, the Samaritans were the Gentiles, were the ones that Jews would not associate with. They were unclean. So Jesus is going after the real root issue here. Because this guy is saying, hey, hey, I'm okay. I'm loving God and I'm loving people. And Jesus said, I'm about to share a, a parable with you that's going to go straight into your heart and it's going to pierce your, um, your prejudice that you have. Because the hero of the story is your villain. A Samaritan comes. No, Jesus, why? Anything but a Samaritan. Why? Why? A Samaritan, but a Samaritan comes along, picks him up. He takes the time. He steps aside, pulls him out, puts him on his donkey. That means he's got to get off his donkey. It's uncomfortable at times. Guys, to reach out to people will be uncomfortable. God's asking us, will we step out of our comfort Puts him on the donkey, even pays. It might cost you something financially. He looks after him. He says, listen, anything else, put it onto my bill. And then Jesus says this, and this, this for me, God spoke to me about this this week when I was preparing. This for me rocks me. Which of these three men do you think was a neighbor to the man? Look at what the expert of the law responded. The one who had mercy on him. Do you see what I'm seeing here? The expert in the law wasn't even willing to recognize that he's a Samaritan. He says it's the one who had mercy. 
I'm not even willing to use that term. I don't even recognize that that person is valid to be recognized, to acknowledge them. You know what? The starting point for us to have the compassion of Jesus is to acknowledge people. Acknowledge people. I I will say this. You Americans are the friendliest bunch of people I've ever met. No, honestly, I, like, you walk into stores, like, people are talking, like, uh, I, I love it. I think it's great. Because the starting point of having Jesus' heart is at least acknowledging people. Greeting people. Hi, how are you doing? How's your day been? You know, it's simple things. But God's calling us deeper, but if we can't even get acknowledging right, and this is what Jesus was nailing with this teacher of the law. Listen, if you can't even acknowledge this guy, then how can you say you really love your neighbor? So I remember I was walking, we were doing an outreach, and I was walking through a shopping mall, and there was an old man seated on a bench. And we were going around and praying for people and looking for our treasure, we did treasure hunts, if you know what that is, and we're, we're looking at our treasure maps and going after these things and, and uh, witnessing to people. And every time I walked past this guy, something in my heart was drawn to him. Have you ever had that? I can't describe it, but just to say it's like I was drawn to this man. And I'm, and I'm walking past and I'm you know, going the circle of the mall and he's just sitting there. And I finally like, you know what, I've just got to sit down with this guy. And I sat down next to him and these words came out of my mouth. Now, I don't normally go this way. I'm not into titles. But I sat down with this guy and said, hi, my name is Stephen, I'm a pastor. How are you doing? And he said to me, he said, today my wife passed away. He said, I didn't even know what to do with myself, so I just came to sit here. And you know, God chooses in that moment to send someone who can just be comfort to him. And I'm like, God, may, may our hearts be sensitive that when we feel that unction towards a person, we don't ignore it and say, you know what, God, I've got better things to do today. Because I could have easily said, well, you know, it's not on my map. You know, I'm here on an outreach and I'm doing all of these. And I could have missed what God wanted to do right in that moment to just to be there for someone. I remember going with this young man who I was discipling, this was many years ago, Lance. Lance was caught as, as a teenager, probably about 18, he was caught in a sugarcane fire and was severely burnt, um, scars all over his face, down his body. Uh, and he came to the university and he joined our church and I was discipling him. And the one day he came with me, we went to the hospital to go and do ministry and we walked into a ward And there was a 17-year-old boy who was burnt. And Lance took a step back because it was too real for him. And the 17-year-old boy had poured gasoline over himself and set himself alight to commit suicide. But it hadn't worked. But in the process, as he breathed in, he breathed in the gasoline and therefore burnt all the way into his lungs everything he had full-on burns over his whole body. The only part of him you could see was literally his eyes because they kept that open. Um, and his mom's sitting there. And we come and we just comfort the mom and we're praying for him. And afterwards I said to Lance, I said, Lance, how are you doing? Because he's never had to face, face it, what, what you went through. He's never had to see it. And he said, the smell, the, the thing, it just, because it, it smells. If you've ever been in that environment, the smell is atrocious. Um, and he said, the smell, just all the memories just came back. And then he, he almost went into place of shock. But you know that for a period of three months, he went there at least twice a week to go and minister to this guy. And he's like, I've been through it. And he gave this boy hope. He shared about where he's at. And you know what? I look at that and I, I was blown away. Because here was a young man who had to face his own struggles, but he stepped beyond that because he could see someone else in need. And that is great maturity for him to be able to do that. That is great compassion. 
It's great compassion. So as we look at the Good Samaritan, let me say this. The people you're going to walk by are not lying in ditches like that story. You might find them like we did two weeks ago. But the people that you're going to walk past that God might say, would you stop and help? Might be someone wearing a suit at your work. Might be someone at your school. Might be someone at the grocery store. It's anywhere. And just because someone looks together doesn't mean they are together. We've got to reach out, amen? Last thing, let me say this. I have a confession to make. Now everyone listens and they want to hear. I don't believe in third world missions. Shock horror. But Steve, you're from South Africa. I don't believe in third world missions. Why? Because at the root of it is something that I've got a problem with. What is the term third world? It's the economic status of a nation. So we are defining a mission based upon the economy of that nation. Come on. There are people going to hell in Europe. There are people going to hell here. Why is it that we look at a poor person and think that somehow we have to do a mission for that person because we've got a mindset that's actually about economy rather than about the spirit of a person? So we want to go to a third world nation to make someone their life better. But their life is only a mist the Bible talks about. And in fact, I've met a lot of people in third world nations who are more on fire for Jesus, who are spreading the gospel more than people in first world countries. And so I'm all for missions. But let it be missions. Let's get rid of this lingo, third world. Let's go to the upmarket areas because people are broken there. They might be able to hide it a little bit more, but they are broken. Suddenly the market crashes and you realize just how broken people are. Suddenly COVID hits and everyone's struggling and the suicide rate goes up and we're like, no, 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 but I thought all these people were okay. We've seen musicians commit suicide. It's happening here as well. And you look at it and you think, but I thought this person was okay. Of course you thought they were okay because you've got your blinkers on. I hope that wasn't too fast for you. May God open up our hearts and our eyes to see as he sees that we've got to reach out. And so I want to ask that you respond in this way. Respond with your heart. You know that when you get leather, in order for it to get soft, you've got to Put oil in, you've got to rub it in, you've got to rub it in, you've got to rub it in. And sometimes we've got to get before the Lord. And we, we're going to start the process of rubbing it in. But let me say this, that the altar we're going to give, where I'm going to ask you to respond, this is the start. But actually, this is us saying, God, may this be a journey for us where you massage our hearts, that we would have your hearts. That, that guys, and this is a dangerous prayer. God, would you open my eyes today out there? Because he will. If you're willing to see, you will see. If you are willing. And if that's your heart's cry, you're going to see it happen. And so I want to pray with you. If you're at that place where you're saying, Stephen, I need my heart to become soft again. I need to have his heart. I need to see things the way he Sees him. If that is you, I want you to come to the front and we're going to pray with you. If you need to just acknowledge that.
cry out to you, Father. We cry out to you, Jesus. May we see the way you see. Father, we pray that that we would even weep, that we would be moved with compassion, Father, that we would we would see the world the way you see it, see it, God, that we would that we would like you be willing to leave the ninety nine and go after the one. That Father, that we would that we would no longer just view our workplace in the same way, and this is dangerous. But we ask you, Father, to change our hearts. Change our hearts, God, where we've been callous, Father, where we have just been able to look at pictures and it doesn't move us anymore, Father, of people across the world or people even here, God, where we've, where we've driven past people and we know that they're hurting, but we don't care anymore, Father. May you break our hearts, Father, for what breaks yours. May you touch our hearts, God. Touch our hearts, Father. We cry out for you, Father. We cry out for your heart for this place, God. We cry out for your heart for Tampa, God. We cry out for your heart for the lost. We cry out for your heart, God. Father, without your heart, we can't do anything, Father. Father, we repent of times where we've said we're too busy. We repent, Father, where we've walked past or driven past or just ignored when we know what we needed to have done in that moment. And so, Father, as we repent, we say, Father, speak to us again. You have every right, God, to speak to us. You have every right, God, to highlight people again. Show us again. May we be faithful, Father. Empower us, God, to be bold, to be able to do what needs to be done and respond in those moments. Let's speak again, Holy Spirit, that we might obey you. I really want us to pray here for a minute, but I want to say something. We, we've noticed in, even in the prayer room that we've gotten really, really good at praying for glory and fire and really terrible at praying for souls and being a part of that solution. So there's no music playing right now because this isn't about feeling good. This is about us coming to terms with our condition, that we are slaves to our calendars and our finances, and that people are going to hell, and we're not moved by that yet. Which means we've got to linger in the altars a little longer and we need to begin to cry out, God help us, have mercy on us. And the more I pray for the region, it's like we want to point out and God's pointing right at Geo. So I'm not removing myself from this. I'm saying, God, would you grip our hearts with this? And it's got to be verbalized. It's not, I can't impart this to you. This has got to be a cry of your heart to say, God, you planted us in Brandon, Florida and we need help. We don't want to be caught up in the narrative of first world country. 
We want to be delivered from calendars and the need for more and the lure of wealth and the pride of life. Father, we need more tears. We are callous. We think we know everything. And we're spiritually puffed up. So God, help us. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm the only one. Maybe it's just me. But the Lord's dealing with us because we're asking him for things. And this is the preparation that has to take place. That we don't hear messages like this and we disconnect and say, no, we pay people to do that. So God, help us. We want to carry this burden. Even if it's just 10 or 15 of us to carry a burden for a region. Not just for good spiritual meetings where we feel good and we shake. But God, where we realize, God, that you are wanting to tabernacle. And you're wanting to bring prodigals home. You're wanting to raise up fathers and mothers that will go the way. Father, I pray that you show us any area in our lives where we have become selfish. Like the rich young ruler, may we not walk away because we're in love with the things you've given us. Can we just begin to pray? Come on. We got to break in here a little bit. Listen, I know what time it is. If you've got to go home, we love you, bless you. But just a little bit longer praying. God, may we not pass people by. Father, not just the broken and those holding signs, but those, God, that have it all put together. God, grip us. Help us to see by the Spirit. God, would you give us eyes out to see by the Spirit what's going on? That we may not be just content throwing dollars at needs. But may we be like those silver and gold we have not, but what we do have. Help us to carry that kind of authority. Father, wake up people that would carry travail even for this region, God. That they would birth something in the spirit. Yeah, Jesus, we just repent, God. We repent for coming in and praying to see you, God, and to know you, and then walking out, God, and not carrying your heart with us, Jesus. God, we come against the spirit of consumerism and Christianity now in the name of Jesus, God, that would come before you and pray for ourselves and pray for more of you and pray to be blessed, God, and we walk out and we walk past those you love. God, we break that spirit now in Jesus' name. I need you guys to come into agreement. In the spirit, like we need to go to war right now. God, we break, we break the spirit of consumerism in this region now in Jesus' name. We come against it, God. We come against it. We will no longer come in this room and pray for us, 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 us only, God, that we would see you, God, and that we wouldn't be moved by your eyes of fire, God, but that we would see, God, the people that we walk past, we would truly see them, God, the prostitutes and the drug addicts, God, and the men and women in business who are lonely and suicidal, God, that we would see in the spirit, God, how you see them. We would see. We would see them, God. Would you mark us this morning, God, with compassion? Would you mark us with compassion, God? <laughs> Would you mark us with compassion, God? Would you forgive us for being selfish, Jesus? Would you forgive us for being selfish, Lord? Soften our hearts this morning, Jesus. And give us eyes to see, Lord. Mark us this morning, God. Let us not walk out of this room and just say that that was a good message. 
Let us not go to the grocery store, God, and say, how quickly can I get out? I don't want to see anybody and talk to anybody, God, but that we would go with eyes to see, Lord, that there are people who need you, Jesus. Just how you saw us, God. Just how you saw me, God. As broken and lonely and depressed and insecure, Lord, help us to see Help us to see you, Jesus. Father, you said in Ezekiel that you would remove a rocky and a stony heart and you would, you would replace it with a tender and a responsive heart, God. So, Father, we're praying for every person in this room. God, would you remove any areas... This is a really good time to let go of offense and bitterness so, so that the Lord can replace. Father, give us grace to release anything that is stopping us from receiving all that you have so that we can see and hear. God, I pray that you would even redirect the cry of our hearts. I don't believe there's anything wrong with praying for glory and crying out, but I just believe that if we catch his heart for people, he'll gift us with that. Father, the same way people prayed for me when I was an addict and I was broken, God, we want to feel that same thing. in our prayer rooms, in our car rides. God, may our car rides become hubs of intercession for the broken. May we turn off the music and the noise. May we redirect our attention, our efforts, our resources, our time, our talents. Father, you said at the end it will be like in Nineveh. The people weren't expecting. They were caught up in their lives. Father, help us not to be caught up. This is not a shame and a condemnation thing, but the Lord has to deal with us. Father, call us up. Help us to ascend. Help us to ascend, God. Help us to ascend. We want to be seated in that Colossians heavenly place to see how you see. Father, we even ask you as a ministry for, the, for, for wisdom on how to reach these, this neighborhood. I really feel a burden that God has called us to disciple this neighborhood and to reach out to them. So God, help us as a corporate spiritual family how to cover this neighborhood, how to see them, how to love them, how to serve them. Father, when we have more times like this of lingering that's not predicated on a sermon, let this, let this end in something.
Father, even for family members that we've grown weary in praying for. God, give us grace to see them, to not lose heart in praying for them. For sons and daughters, mothers, fathers, give us grace, God, to stand in the gap, to cover them. Father, we ask you for a fresh fear of the Lord. Father, give us reverential fear. You've given us an assignment, God. Let us not take assignments given to us by our jobs more serious than the assignment given to us from heaven. May we feel just as strongly a conviction to show up to our secret place as we do to that 9 o'clock clock in time. There's an invitation to a soft and tender heart. It's poorness of spirit. We ask you for divine appointments, God, with people. Like Steve with that young man. May you put us in the right place at the right time and give us courage to speak out. supposed to pray over us. Let's come pray with us. Go ahead. I'm going to have Marcus pray. Can we just agree? And some of you just might need to linger in the altars for a little. There's going to be no music today because this is not about music. It's about the Lord dealing with us. So. touch our hearts again. Lord, you dust the cobwebs off of our heart. And Father, would you forgive us for making everything about us? Would you forgive us to be so inner focused that we miss those around us that you've called us to? Father, I ask that you would touch our hearts and that we would become compassionate again. Let it not be something we do. Let it be who we are. Lord, that we don't, we don't look to fill off a checklist of I did my nice deed for the day, but that we'll be, we'll just walk and flow with the Holy Spirit. It's not about a checklist and it's not about talking to every single person and forcing yourself to do something. It's just being available and letting the Lord lead and guide us and move our hearts. So, Father, we just say yes. We say yes and amen. That you can have my heart. You can have my feet. You can have my hands, you can have my mouth. And Lord, that I will be an extension of you to my neighbors. The neighbors I've complained about, I'm going to begin to pray for them. The neighbors I've complained about, I'm going to begin to bless them. 
the people that irk us and move us the, the worst ways, Lord, that we will begin to feel compassion for those very people. Lord, help us to not forget that you looked on your accusers and those that whipped you and, and, and hung you, and you said, Lord, forgive them. Lord, you said forgive them. So, Father, we just, even we just break a, a fence off of ourselves, yeah. and we just break dignity to make ourselves feel like people did us wrong so we don't have to talk to them anymore. Or, or people rubbed us the wrong way so we don't have to pray for them. Lord, that we have to, we pray for them all the more. That we'll bless those that persecute us and treat us and speak of us poorly. Lord, let it be a lifestyle. Let it come out of our very being. Lord, I pray that you would just shift our minds off of what it, sh what it should or shouldn't look like. Get, what, I, Lord, we just even just, just take the word evangelism out of it, and we say it's just being your children. We just take that word evangelism out, and it's not, for, it's not for the extroverts. It's not for the people that like to talk. It's for the people that love you. And, Lord, will we be so close in proximity to you that our hearts will match your hearts? I, I firmly believe that, that we lose compassion because we're not as close to the heart of Jesus as we once were. He's talking about this. He's beating for this. So, Lord, help our hearts to be for our community, for our families, for those that are lost. No matter what, where they are on the economic scale. It's not about third world. It's not about rich or poor. It's about do they know you. Jesus, we love you. Help our love to manifest in loving others. In Jesus' name. Can we just thank the Lord? I just feel like, God, thank you for confronting us. Thank you, God, for caring enough about us to meet us. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Hey, I want to say one last thing. Um, I didn't tell them, and they don't know, but now that you guys have heard their story, Steve and Jackie, I, I, God brought them from South Africa to be here as missionaries to us. Often we think about sending, but how many of you know we need to receive? And so... I really feel like I wanted to do this today. There's a slide that, that they put up with their ministry name. I want you to understand they came here and they sold everything to come as missionaries. I want to say this. As a church, we are partnered with them. As a, as a family, we are partnered with them. We sow into them every month unashamedly because we believe in what God carries. I want to invite you. And if you don't feel it, that's fine. But I want to invite you to, to be part of what God is doing there and to support them. It doesn't really matter how much, but I, I mean like not just, hey, good job, but financially support. Because I believe there, that there's something about sowing into something that we receive from. So again, I just want to invite, that's the name of the ministry, danielgroupministry.org. I think you could, you could put the QR code and it'll take you to their website. But I want to invite you guys, man, to, you guys can walk directly up to them. They came here and didn't ask for anything. I need you to understand this. They didn't ask for anything. It wasn't like a job offer. They felt the Lord telling them to come, and they're trusting the Lord. So sometimes we pray for the solution, and sometimes we're part of the solution. Amen. Say amen. 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 So thank you guys. That, those are the ways. I just wanted to partner. And thank you. I don't know where Steve's at. Thank you, bro. I love you guys so much. Can we give him a hand? Thank you. I love you guys. Again, you can partner with them. There's no prayer room until Saturday. There's a book in the back. We wanted to bless you guys. So there's a book in the back on prayer. It's completely free. Take one on your way out, written by Michael Dow. If you're ready to go, give somebody a hug. We will see you next week.